Welcome to the corner. I'm glad you're watching again. Uh, we've talked about God being a creator, God being an author, and God being an inventor. Uh, we want to explore from the Word of God together that God didn't remain only like this large, far off author that wrote a book and you never meet him. Um, God reveals himself very closely to us. He's displaying himself. He wants to be known. And God makes himself known not only as those, those big uh, qualities of being an author, uh, being a creator and being an inventor. But today he shows us that he's a father and a father that sends his son so that we can know him. He wants humans to know him as a heavenly father through his son. Before we dive into that in the book of 1 John chapter 1, I want to back up and tell you a story. In college, I had a roommate and he used to always joke about both of us being PKs. I was a PK because my father was a pastor all growing up here in Chicago. But my roommate always joked that he was also a PK, but he was a penitentiary kid because his father was a gang leader here in Chicago who got locked up for criminal activity. And because of that, sadly enough, he grew up without seeing his father on a day-to-day -day basis in the household, in the neighborhood for the majority of his growing up years, right? Well, he would describe to me how the way that he got to know his father was primarily through letters. He would read from him. He would read about his love for his son. He would read about what his father valued. Through these letters, he got little windows as to who his father was. Well, one day he came up to me and said that his father was getting released from the penitentiary and was coming home. He described to me how he was nervous. He said, man, I don't know what he's gonna be like. I don't know how I'm gonna react. This is, this is that first time that I get to embrace him and see him face to face. You see the, the, the little glimpses of how he was getting to know his father for years as letters. Uh, he had some knowledge of him. He could, he could describe his father from what his father had written. Now it was becoming reality. And it was a powerful moment. He said that when he saw his father, they embraced, they cried. And he said it was just surreal because that letter became alive. It became a face to him. It became a, a living being right in front of him. Um, he also said that in the, the next few years, it really helped him to understand the goods, the bads, the uglies in his own life um, because he got to know his father and, and the things passed down from his father to himself. Now, what does that have to do with God? Uh, here at Corner Talk, we talk about who is God and who are we? Well, the fact is that God could have remained an author that was far off, that you could have said, hey man, look at that mountain, that's fresh. Or, look at my baby daughter's uh, finger, man, that's incredible. Uh, man, who invented that, right? They had to be an incredible intelligent designer. But that is not where God stops describing who he is. God describes himself all through the scriptures as being a heavenly father. But primarily when we see the New Testament start at the book of the Gospel of Matthew on, we start to see a very intimate portrayal of God saying that he is a father and that he is sending his son. Obviously, I refer to Jesus Christ being the son of God. And this is one of Jesus's main messages. When he came to earth, he said, I need to show people that I am the son of God, that I am God and you can meet me face to face. God became a human so that us humans, we as humans, could understand who he was in, in, a, in a very clear, day-to-day, -day, real form. So when you think about it, God wrote his signature all over creation. He wrote his signature all over humanity. You see it in our complexities. But the, the most clear way that God has revealed himself is by sending his son. His signature, all the fullness of God, was placed into a human form right, into flesh, who became a human called Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that is how John talks about Jesus. John was one of the apostles of Jesus. He was one of the nearest apostles of Jesus. And he wrote a couple of the letters and a gospel in the Word of God in the New Testament. The way John talks about Jesus is, is with this awe that he knew he was God, but he also knew him as a close friend, as a close friend. A brother as a face-to-face a, a, a -face experience. And so it offers us hope that we can get to know God, not only um, to observe him as a creator and author, but to know him face-to-face -face as we read about him in the word of God and as we trust in his promises, his claims about himself, and his, his uh, guarantee that he will come back again. Let's see what John said about Jesus. First John 1, introduction. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. 
We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. There's a lot of juice in those four verses. So a couple phrases stand out here. The first one is the words, the beginning. So John makes very clear that God has been from the beginning. Specifically, Jesus Christ has been from the beginning. He is God. He's not like a human that has a shelf life. Um, he's saying, man, Jesus is eternal. But it's very interesting because it goes from that claim of him being eternal to, uh, yeah, we've heard him. <laughs> we've seen him with our own eyes. We've looked at him and our hands, this is how intimate it goes. Our hands have touched him. Our hands have touched God. Um, he goes on to say the life appeared. So God, who is a spirit, an eternal spirit, came in human form and appeared to us, right? To make himself very clear to us. So now John's like, man, I wanna tell everybody. It says in verse two, this is what we've seen. We testify to it and we proclaim to you eternal life. He wants to give us eternal life. That's the purpose that God has come in human form. Check out what he says in verse three. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. Again, he says these words, seen and heard. And then he goes even farther. He says, so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. Let's, let's pause there. This man named John, who was just a regular dude from 2000 years ago, growing up in the area of the Middle East, right? Is saying, I have walked with God, I have seen God, I have heard God, I've touched God, it's Jesus Christ. He is the word, the Messiah, the sent one from God, the sent one to come give eternal life. And uh, it's just an incredible statement there. You either gotta say, bro, you're crazy, or wow, you have a conviction that Jesus is the son of God and that he is that real and that you've experienced it. And you can tell here he has a firm conviction saying, look, I'm not crazy. God came to us. He's not far off. He's here. You can know him. The word fellowship is really important here. Fellowship is when you're in good relationship. You're in tight, intimate relationship. Often we think of God as like so far off. Who am I? I'm so broken. How could I know him? It was the same thing for John. But John is saying, I know him. I'm in intimate relationship with him. Now, one point that I want to tease out here is when John wrote this, Jesus had already gone up to heaven. Jesus was gone. So it wasn't during the three plus years that John walked with him on the hillside in the Middle East and Israel, all around Jerusalem and Capernaum and Judea. No, no, he wasn't kicking it with Jesus physically anymore. And yet he's writing this letter saying, I still have fellowship with Jesus. I have fellowship with God because he knew that his relationship was restored through forgiveness and through belief in Jesus Christ, the son of God. He, he ends it by saying, we write this to make our joy complete. The purpose that Jesus Christ came was not just to reveal that he was God, that you should know him, but the purpose was to believe in him. Your sins can be forgiven. You can be made right with God. And that is why John says here, I'm writing this, I'm testifying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and came down to show himself to us so that we would know who he is and, and believe in who he is so that what? Your joy could be complete. Let's be honest. Who are we without a loving, loving God in our life? Without God, I would be without hope. What happens when I die? Who created me? What's my purpose? What's my identity? I look around in the world, I'm like, man, this is so broken. Where's the hope at? And here John is saying, we want your joy to be complete. There's hope. God has come to us. God has come to us in human form and you can know him. You can know him just like I have known him. The invisible God who is spirit that reveals himself in all creation hasn't remained far. He's come in human flesh so that you would know him. This is incredible to me because if I was an author or a painter or the creator of any, anything and whatever I created, uh, let's imagine it comes alive and it hates 
the very creator that made it, right? The painting hates the painter. The sculpture hates the person sculpting it. You could take it even, even further, even more close to home, right? The father and mother who have a son or a daughter and that son and daughter starts to hate them and that's the relationship's fractured. It would be a, a, a huge step of humility and love for that creator to say, you know what? I'm gonna go back into that broken creation. I'm gonna show that I'm the hope to be reconnected to them. I'm gonna take care of their brokenness and I'm gonna show that they can know me personally and our relationship can be right again. This is what Jesus Christ did for human beings of all nations, all backgrounds. Um, we're all broken and we all needed the creator to come in to our broken world show himself which he did through Jesus Christ forgive us of our brokenness as we confess that we believe in him and we need him and he says then you'll have joy get to know him first John is a great book for you to jump into uh, it's very intimate like I said the the person that wrote it John who we talked about writes about knowing Jesus in such an intimate way and I think that if you listen to it on the streetlights app or if you read it in a Bible it would really grab your heart and it would really show you that God is not far off. Some of us have forgotten that. Some of us have forgotten that God knows us personally and wants a personal relationship with us. He is the creator that says, hey, I sent my son so that you would know me again. I can make you a new creation and I can make you a son and daughter of this incredible new spiritual family of broken people made new, forgiven of their sins and in right relationship joyful relationship with God.